Well, not not to be mean to them, but they're in a situation, and uh, that you know that's why I wrote the storyline because I saw people in the situation and they needed. Uh, everyone needs to understand what they are, what they could do, uh, and I had to do it in such a way that it didn't point somebody out. You can approach a story. You can approach fantasy. You can approach fiction. You you can get in the heart and mind of somebody that's in this condition without thinking, oh, my God, one of these people are going to find me. You know, like you were considering this guy. Yes, you can meet one on the bus. You can meet one standing next to you at the bank. And you could meet one of these uh, on the street somewhere. And they you wouldn't are, even know in it. In my mind, they are real. You yeah. wouldn't know it. Yeah. That's that's what well, I kind of got that impression, Hopefully too. you wouldn't know it. Yeah. But uh, he, you know, like I say, it's, it's, it's not fun. It's not glamorous like Hollywood would portray it. Uh, they do live longer. Uh, think of blood as being a very singular food source. Uh, our bodies, you know, we all we eat all kinds of stuff. Uh, when Macon was in this hospital thing, tested by these doctors, they found her uh, rate of repair, her metaz- metabolism, and her rate of repair. I think it was at seventy-five percent, but actually, in her native state, when she's healthy and not under duress would have been much higher, like in the 90s. Because blood is such a singular food source, their bodies have realigned itself. Uh, When someone is drinking blood, that's like pure nutrition. Their bodies don't have to do a lot to assimilate that into what their body needs. Therefore, more of their overall metabolic pathway is turned to repair. That's why they appear not to age at the same rate as a human person does. So it slows it down, the aging process. Well, it makes it appear to slow down. You know, 20 years is 20 years for them, 20 years for us. Uh, Like Macon, uh, I think she's on like a 25 to 1, um, you know, ratio. So 25 years for her physical years like we have she only appears to age like one year wow well the, going back to this guy too you know he he's been shut into his apartment for years and years i mean what type of life is that i mean aging process uh you know i mean does it really matter i mean you know he has no life that's you know that's what's bad and and and, and i don't know how it is on in your book but do they have a normal life? Do they hold? A, a, can they hold a job down or function with other people that don't drink blood? I mean, you know, I mean, or is it the point when they're around other people? Do they, do they have the craving so bad that they can't control it? I would think, for the most part, you know, at least uh, three fourths of them can blend in with society. Now, I don't know about this gentleman. It sounds like he's he's over uh, in the extreme because of his light sensitivity. You know, might make it a little more difficult. When Thomas was laying on his bed thinking about what had happened to him, he finally came to the conclusion, you know, I'm becoming like Mac, and there's no denying it now because his body was changing. He had all these symptoms. And he kept thinking, okay, I've got to get a job with a blood bank. I've got to get a night job. I've got to get sunscreen. I mean, he kept thinking in his head, making this list of things he'd have to do. Now, Macon did show up and rejoin him as part of the story, and she, she sort of helped him along there. For instance, she has this very concentrated sunscreen that she uses. Now, the SPF... Isn't that like the factor that it, anyway, the SPF is over 100, 
So our gentleman friend that, that called you, he needs to try to find the most potent sunscreen he can he can get and use it yeah. and see if that helps him. And Macon is careful to avoid um, what she calls the high time of the day. You know, like when you're out in the middle of the the road and all these glare from buildings and cars, the reflective surfaces. Yes. She tends to avoid those because they hurt. So you're definitely talking lifestyle changes, but maybe maybe if he could find a position, maybe either working with animals, working in a building, uh, working in a lab. Well, uh, he, did he say whether or not he drinks animal blood or not? No, it's human blood, and he, what he said is he doesn't leave his apartment mainly because he. I, I hate to say what he said. It, he it shocked me when he said it. He said he looks at humans as cattle, and that yeah. the, the urges are so strong that if he would leave his part, apartment, you know, uh, that he 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 was, said he couldn't could, probably couldn't control himself. It sounds like he's he's fairly isolated, and it sounds like he's a human blood drinker that's that's highly evolved and adapted uh, on that path. Uh, I, I can't tell from what you've described whether he's gone through the full change or not. Well, I don't know. It, I, I don't it, know just my happened. gut feeling is that he hasn't. Well, what happens uh, when they... His, his, what happens when they I'm go sorry? Through, what happens when they go through the full change i mean what what happens to them uh, well in thomas's case your your digestive system starts sloughing off and your digestive ch- system changes from the inside out what's in the place of your normal stomach is something else to absorb the blood immediately when you ingest it it's not a normal human stomach, and you can tell whether someone is fully vampiric or not just by putting a stethoscope over their abdomen and see if they have the normal gut rumbling sounds that a human has or not. And, you know, we we can't really tell from what this gentleman told you, but my guess is at this point he's probably still human enough but his body is highly, highly adapted and highly, uh, uh, he requires blood, both psychologically and uh, physiologically now. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess you could say he's truly vampiric in the sense that he's got to have it. Yeah. Uh, he said if he doesn't have it, the cravings are so bad, but he got sick and, you know, immediately, if he, you know, misses a feeding, he gets really ill and, and you know and, and and vomits and stuff weird stuff he was talking about but i mean you know uh, uh boy i just don't know well, what to say. Well, like i say it's not fun no i wouldn't want to be in that situation and that's what makes me wonder you know there is other people out there you know because from what little i do know there is groups of people that that's what they do and you know i mean you know well, uh, when you're going, when you're entering a vampiric community, you're more or less drinking blood recreationally, not like you had to have it. You know, they're probably still consuming their normal human diet most of the week, and then get together on Friday night and have at it. Yeah, kind of like a cults do, like witches and you know warlocks and other type of. Uh groups that you know do their thing too hey the devil's got them all out there just lined up just waiting for you yeah i know that that for a fact i mean you know i i also had a medium on my show recently too and uh she was telling me about you know how demons can actually invade you know somebody that you know was like alcoholic or in a severe depression or is going through emotional stress. That's the that's when they like uh, you know entering into you. Hmm, that's interesting. I thought so. I mean, you know, I I guess it stands point. Like she she said, they really uh, she was going as far as say even some of the people that get committed into mental institutions, there's nothing really wrong with them, you know, other than they 
are possessed. So, I mean, you know, like, I guess even like this person, I, I, uh, Randy was on my show, uh, you know, uh, being a vampire or what he claims of being a vampire, I guess if you digest for years and years, human blood and nothing else, uh, your stomach would change. And I think a lot of things would change. Uh, you know, my only question is for like him and he couldn't answer it. I said, aren't you worried about getting AIDS or getting, you know, getting uh, hepatitis or something, something else? Nope. 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 Don't get that. I think the problem is get any blood disease. Yeah. I think their body is immune to it. This, you know, there was like, um, Douglas, there's a uh, tribes in Africa that are famous. What they do is they drink either human blood or they drink animal blood. You know, they mix it with something and drink it, you know, like with basically like with an alcohol mixed with the blood. Uh, I, I saw that on uh, Discovery one time. It just makes you wonder. Sure. There, there are lots of blood, human blood drinkers out there. More human blood drinkers than true vampiric ones. Yeah. Many, many more. Yeah. So, uh, on your book, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, how far do you plan to go, uh, go in the series of, of, the, of the books? Hey, the whole 16. Um, starting with Silently Comes the Night, Rites of Passage, With Deadly Intent, Overkill, and then each of the uh, four-story blocks that take them into Europe and part of the Ukraine and Canada, and then brings them back to the United States. And and then the first four of the story, beginning with Macon's story, uh, delves into the past, like when Macon changed and when she met Stefan and uh, how they got to this country and... Uh, that's really a, a lot of foundation to see uh, how she matured and so how how she grew up in those in in her situation. Now you said she was what three hundred and some years old. She's about three hundred nineteen now. She was born in uh, sixteen ninety eight, and the third and the fifteenth of December is her birthday. And how does she keep her, I mean, what what type of age does she appear in your book? I mean, is she youthful, like in her 20s? At the, or? At, at the time of the story, she looked like she was in her early to mid-20s. Now she looks like she's in her mid to late 20s. Wow. And uh, basically, now how about the gentleman in the book? How old is he? Well, Thomas, he changed when he was 24. Uh, basically, throughout the storyline, he looked like he was uh, 24, 25, 26. Oh. I don't know what he looks like now because I don't know where he is now. But uh, at the, he did survive to the end of the storyline. And, and even though the, the storyline itself took 10 years, like from, uh, let's see... 1993 to about 1999, so what, those six years? So in that year, he, he appeared to age maybe about a year and a half, I guess. So it slows, Not much. It slows the aging way, way down. Well, it, at least half, and then after you go through the change, it, it accelerates, depending on... Uh, the different factors that, that go into how, how you appear to age or not is, you know, when you were first exposed to blood, when you started drinking blood, when you could no longer drink anything but blood, you know, those time frames, uh, how old you were at onset, when you, and all these different things, well, there's like a formula for it. Um, what I did, I took making Stefan and the other people in the story like John and I looked at their their time and I came up with a rough estimate as to how old they looked like John in the story looked like he was in his mid 30s oh wow now, but he changed earlier than making and he was older than her 
Now, did these storylines, they just appear...